What does that intro sound like? Yeah. So uh, first thing that happens is the the operator from whatever company you're using mm-hmm. is going to be on the other line, and then they tell you they have a live transfer for you. You can pull their information up. You have a printout of you know address, date of birth, all, all the all the things. And um, he told me, you're ready for it, and transfers over. And so the representative would say, um, you know, okay, Rob, I have a licensed uh, insurance representative on the other line for you. I'm going to hop off the call. Have a great day. Okay, you too. And then I get on the phone with them. And so I would say something along the lines of, um, hey, Rob, my name is Chris. I'm going to be helping you get your policy put in place today. And uh, I say that because I want them to know that we're not, this isn't just for a quote. We're putting this in place. And and so, hey, Rob, this is Chris. I'm going to be helping to get your policy put in place today. How's your day going so far? Going good. It's going good. Great. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good thing. That's a good thing, man. All right. So it looks like you're obviously looking to get some life insurance put in place. I um, just want to verify a little bit of information with you real quick. I have your address down here as 123 Main Street. Is, uh, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Then your date of birth as 121964. Is that right? Mm-hmm. All right. Perfect. Let me just mark that down. All right. So now... Um, Obviously, you're looking for some kind of coverage. Do you have a mortgage right now that you're trying to protect, or you, is it more for like final expense to make sure you're not burning anybody? If God forbid something were to happen to you, uh, fi- final expense is yeah. that what most of yours? I would. S- are you asking me? I'm, I'm, at, I'm, I'm, at, I'm out of role play now. Are okay. Most of them are they mostly final expense? Most or? of them are final expense. Okay, so let's go with that. So okay. I'm looking for final expense. I don't want to. I don't want the family to have to deal with a burden. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I, out of pretty much everyone that I talk to, that's what most people are looking for. So we can definitely help you out with that. So the way Rob that this process is going to work <clears throat> is we're, I'm going to ask you a few medical questions, try to get you um, pre-approved so we know what kind of products you're going to be eligible for. And then once we figure that out, we'll go through a couple different options, policy uh, specific to you. And we'll pick out one of those policies that makes sense for your situation. And we'll go ahead and submit a request for coverage. That request for coverage is going to take anywhere from one to two weeks for Alpha to come back. And what the carrier is going to do in that time is they're going to look at things like your prescription history, uh, your medical background. They want to make sure that no one's trying to take out any insurance in your name or anything, um, whether you can just escape from prison or hide out there in California, yeah. right, <laughs> or wherever you are. <laughs> so yeah. in the last yeah. seven years, have you been treated for anything like a heart attack, cancer, uh, stroke, COPD, or diabetes that requires insulin? Uh, no. Okay, perfect. And what about the small stuff like high blood pressure, cholesterol, anxiety, depression, or thyroid issues? All of the above. All of the above, all right. And are those conditions well controlled with medications? They are. They are. All right, perfect. So we should be able to help you out there. All right, so like I said, we're going to look at a few different options for you. And uh, once we find one that actually makes sense, we'll go ahead and submit that request for coverage. So um, give me one second to pull this up. Now, you said your date of birth is 1264, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and do you smoke? I don't. All I right. do not. Perfect, perfect. All right, so I got this pulled up. So um, let's look at option one. So option one, we're looking at $25,000. Uh, $25,000 is about the average cost of the funeral in your area. Um, uh, $25,000 would be one fifty six a month. Now, obviously, this is going to pay out if you were to die, right? But um, this is also going to pay out while you're alive. So if you were to get diagnosed with any kind of a terminal illness, so 12, uh, 12 months or less to live, they're going to make you the beneficiary. They're going to start paying you out the entirety of that face amount. Um, this is also going to have a cash value account attached to it. And I don't know if you're familiar with cash value, but basically how that works is, um, every time you make a premium payment, a portion of that's going to go towards your cash value account. Now that cash value account is going to begin to accrue interest. And so let's just say in, uh, I don't know, five, 10 years from now, you have six, seven, eight thousand $8,000 in that cash value account. Well, you can go ahead and take some of that money out and you can go use it to buy whatever you want, right? A TV, dogs, whatever, you, whatever you're into. <laughs> All right. Or you can actually leave that money in there and you can actually use that account to help uh, to make those premium payments for you. So it's like a self-funding account at that point. Kind of a cool option. And this also has a double indemnity rider attached to it, which you do not pay for. They just throw that in there for free. And what this means is that if you were to die by any reason other than natural causes, so you get into a car crash, um, choke on something, fall, hit your head, walk in the woods and a tree limb comes down to smash you in the back of the head and lights out, then they're going to go ahead and double that payment. So instead of $25,000, they are not going to pay you out $50,000. Okay. So that's option one, okay? Option two, we're looking at $20,000. $20,000 um, is going to be one twenty-four a month, and this is going to have the exact same benefits as option number one. So cash value account, you got terminal illness, you're going to be protected, and double indemnity rider, you're, you're good to go. And then there's option three, Fifteen thousand dollars. This is ninety four dollars a month, and same exact benefits as option number one and number two: terminal illness, cash value, and double indemnity rider, all going to be included. So, Rob, out of those options, what one do you think would make the most sense for your situation? Uh, 
I think 20 would be good. 20, yeah, that's the, probably the most common. That's, I think that's the most common one that we're seeing right now. So we can go ahead and submit the request uh, for coverage for that. And, again, what they're going to do is they're going to look at things like your prescription history, your medical background, and then, again, just going to verify that you are who you say you are. No one's trying to take this out in your name. All right? Okay. All right, perfect. So um, in order to submit the request for coverage, obviously the company is going to require some sensitive information to make sure you are who you say you are. Um, that's going to include your driver's license number, social security number, and bank account information. All right. So just go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and grab that information while I start getting this uh, application put through. Okay. And then they, they, nine times out of 10, they yeah, okay. Okay. You get pushback on what part of that? If I do get pushed back, it's on the, it's on the uh, bank account. I found uh, nobody I really. I like the options, Chris, but like, ah, uh, you need my bank information? Yeah. So, um, I actually don't need the bank information, but in order to submit the application, these companies require that to be part of the application. Now, it's important to note that no money is going to actually be drafted today. They're not even going to take that until you're actually approved for the coverage. But these companies, after COVID and everything, they've been over inundated with applications for life insurance, and they're not even going to entertain any applications now that uh, from clients they don't think are serious about it. So that's just one of the requirements that they now have. It's less paper chasing for them in the long run. Okay, so, like I said, if you don't if you don't mind, just go grab that for me, and uh, I'll, we'll begin putting this through. Hey, that's beautiful. All right. So then they get it, and mm-hmm. they give it to you, and then what happens next? So now we we have now here's the challenging part: technology. Yeah. So let's run through. So you, you seamless, dude. This is just like silky smooth. Then you got to put the the ball in their court because they have to figure out how to sign this thing now. Yeah, and that can be challenging. So let's run through let's run through how you troubleshoot that because okay. I can see why you're closing so much business. That was a four minute pitch, and I feel like I've known you forever. <laughs> like that, you're really good at that. That's nice. so smooth, and that that rebuttal to that bank objection is is freaking gold. We'll have to get that typed out to get out to people because that is really good. Um, you're not getting many objections there now. Signatures. Mm-hmm. Um, you say, no, I'm not in person. Obviously you're, if you're not in state, there's no way around this. So you, you've got to get proficient at this. And the play is to, is to go outside of your home state as, as an option, because you need to get the cost of leads down. Correct. So now you're, you, you click when you set up the application, you, you click, I'm not, I've never done this. So walk me through it as if I don't know what I'm doing. So you, you say, I'm not with the client. Yep. Okay. And then let's just use Americo because we always lead with Americo. Yeah. And you click email signature mm-hmm. and you send it over. Then what happens next? And then so yeah, it's going to have an access code. So you take that access code. I copy and paste. So you have to have their access code is automatically populated. And then you have to enter one for yourself as well. So I just copy and paste it. So it's the same access code. Is it a confusing one or is it like simple? Like there's no, dude, in there. It, it, it's like it's six numbers, eight, four, six, seven, four, two. Okay. And then and then you just tell. So what I do is I tell them, I say, all right, all right, Rob, so um, I'm going to be sending you an email in a second here. This is going to be the HIPAA disclosure. This is just going to give the company authorization during the prescription history. Uh, I'm going to send that email to this email address. and just I want to make sure it's going to you, so I'm going to verify it real quick. And then I go over what the email address is. Yes, that's it. Then you hit send email. And then, all right, so I'm sending that over right now, so you should have that any second. Go ahead and open your email up and make sure that, that you got that. Let me know when you do. Once you get it, uh, and you open the document, it's going to ask you for an access code. So when you get to that part, tell me, and I will let you know what that code is. And then, so you're keeping the control on that part too. They still need you at this point. Yeah, I, I, yes, and th- that's intentional. I, I like to, I want them to need me for the entire duration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then they do that, um, and then that's America's. So that's a HIPAA one, and then the same, the same thing. I, I've heard just whisperings that at the end of the America app, it's like a, it's a little different than that initial one. It's well, I mean, yes and no. So it's different in the sense that there's more places for them to click to sign. It's just like if you're doing it in person, it's okay. the same. They sign the exact same thing. Same thing. They click here to apply, click here to apply. They're just doing that versus you. Yeah. They just do it instead of you. Okay. And, and they're not, they don't actually have to do the signature again. They, 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 they hand you their signature on the HIPAA form. And then when they're on that uh, last one that you send, mm-hmm. when they click that little yellow tab, it just mm-hmm. automatically applies the same signature that they did in the HIPAA form. Okay, cool. And they, they are going to have to answer the mother's maiden name. And so then they just type that in, but that's, that's it. And then they, then they submit it and it goes back to you, your page refreshes. And, um, uh, so if it's a HIPAA form, it just automatically refresh, refreshes and you just go to the next page. If it's the very last one, then you get an email as the agent. And then you just, you, you have to uh, go into your email, your email, and then you just sign yours. Got it. Now that's involved. What does the process look like with some of the other carriers? Cause you're, you're right in America, Aetna, a bunch of Aetna, AMM and Moo, 
Is it similar with those companies or is it different per carrier? Yeah, it, it, it's similar. So like um, American Amicable, it's so if you're doing the application in person, they actually have to sign it with their finger. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you send the email, they just have to type their name and then Got it applies it. that. I don't know what that signature is called. You, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Tell you just type yeah. in. Um, and and that, that's for the most part, that's how all the other carriers work outside of America, okay. from my experience. So a little simpler. Yeah. Yeah. Less less troubleshooting with that, with with other apps, or is it about it, the same? About the same. Yeah. About the okay. Same. You got you figure out one. You you figured them all out. Yep. All right. Good. Um, let's do some role play on how you walk a client through if they're not technologically inclined. Okay. So, you have sent me a hey, Rob. You should. You should have gotten your email. Chris, I'm looking and I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to get this a lot. This is how like, a 20 minute process turns into a 45 minute process. So th- you know, but the way, the way that I look at that is if I was in home, it's probably going to take about 45 minutes anyway, because you spend the front half report building sure. on the phone. You, you really don't do much of that. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's a trade off. So now you don't see it. And then I just, first thing that I do is I verify that it's actually going to the right email address. I'm so looking, I'm looking. I, 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 I'm interrupting. <laughs> I keep hitting refresh. It's not there, Chris. <laughs> Where is it? All right. So here's, here's, here's what I want you to do. So first of all, I want to make sure that I have the correct email address. Uh, so it's, you know, rob654 at gmail.com, right? Uh-huh. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, Okay, perfect. It. <laughs> so now what I want you to do is go into your inbox and then just make sure that that's, that rob654 account is the actual account that you're looking at. Okay. And then they go ahead and they, they do that. So go ahead, refresh that. Um, let me know what inbox you're actually in. I'm in I'm in the correct one, and okay. I think I see it now. Okay. You think you see it now? Yeah. It should, okay. Is it from America? It's yeah. Well, yeah. It's sales connection via DocuSign. Is that is that what you? Oh, see? I was looking for America. That's why I didn't yep. see it. So That'll it's sales it. at Doc- sales connection via DocuSign. I see it. I All got right. it now. So go ahead, go ahead, Robin, and, and click that. Yeah. So let me know when you do that. I'm ready. Okay. And now you're going to see something in there that says review document. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. All right. Click that. And after you click that, it's going to ask you for an access code. Go ahead. Tell me when, when you get that. It's not working. All right. Go ahead and try <laughs> to click that again. What part's not working? Okay. That part. I'm clicking it, but nothing's happening. On what? Well, I'm clicking the click here that you told me. On review document? Yeah. Okay. So time out. Uh-huh. I don't think, I've never had that Okay. Happen. Where does it happen? That never happened. It always works. Okay, what part <laughs> doesn't happen so then you can walk through how to troubleshoot somebody? It's just, dude, like sometimes they just can't find the email. And then after they find it, when they go to sign it, they don't know how to, like, they don't know how to do it. All right, so walk me through that. So now it's, it's up. And okay. I'm, I'm and then okay. now what do I do, Chris? So there should be something in there that says start. It should be at the top right. Do you see where it says start? I do. All right, go ahead and click that. Okay. And then it's going to bring you down to a part where there's going to be a little little yellow tab mm-hmm. at the bottom of the screen. You're mm-hmm. going to tap that yellow yellow tab. Go ahead and do that. Got it. Okay. And now a box should open up. It's uh-huh. going to tell you to draw your signature. Do you see that? <laughs> I do. All right, go ahead yeah. and draw your signature. All right. You put your John Hancock on there. Yeah, it doesn't look like mine. Should I redo it? Yeah, they never do. They never do. <laughs> this, this is the beauty, the beauty of technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes it looks great. Sometimes it doesn't, but it usually doesn't. Okay. So, all right. So uh, go ahead and hit OK and then submit that. Let me know when you are done. Submit it. Okay, perfect. Now I'm just waiting for it to come back on my end. That comes back on my end. You told me earlier when we were running through this, it's like sometimes they can't find it. And then you tell them, you see when the email got sent? Like you used the example 117. Yeah, yeah. That so, part. So walk, walk, walk us through. Okay. Through, so if you had it to identify the, if the you email. hadn't refreshed it, and then just no, I see it now. Okay. Okay. Then the next thing that I would do is say, all right, um, go to the top of your inbox and let me know what time the last email you received came. One twelve. Okay. Try to go ahead and refresh that. This should have come in at one seventeen. Okay, and then then they're able to identify it. Yeah, like I, I, it's it's never gone to somebody's spam. It's never like it's always been in their inbox. Good, and regardless of the carrier, it's not going to promotions or spam or junk. That has never happened to me. Okay, cool. You know that would be what next step is though. Is I would say, all right, go to your junk, make sure it's not in there. Go to all inboxes, make sure it's not in there, and the, then that that hasn't happened to me yet. But yeah. that's what I would do. The way you're explaining this sounds so simple, and I think the holdup for a lot of agents is like. The technology end of it, it mm-hmm. just sounds too complicated. So like, I don't want anything to do with it. But the way you're describing this, it's more simple than doing it at home. It's super simple. And so what I would say, if you're if you're kind of on the fence because you think that the technological side is kind of too advanced or complicated, what I would suggest is go ahead, go like in America or something and do an application on, I don't know, Joe Schmo. And then just get to the part where you send the HIPAA document. Mm-hmm. So you receive the email, like put your, your email in there. 
And then you can see what it looks like from a client's perspective. Now, you don't have to submit or initiate the uh, underwriting, obviously, sure. but that way you can see exactly what they see. And that's going to be the same exact email or the same email address. It's going to be the same access code. It's going to look exactly the same from that HIPAA document as it does at the very end of the application. So if you know what it's going to look like and how to get through it, doing the HIPAA document, you're going to have no problem when it comes to the end and actually submitting it. Awesome. Now let's talk about how you solidify the sale. So it gets an approved. Let's talk about two things. Mm -hmm. So uh, it got, it gets approved and then we'll wrap up the sale and then it doesn't get approved. How do you pivot on a telesale? So um, on a tell us, so first it gets approved. Uh-huh. Right, so it gets approved. And so I tell them, it, it, I never tell them that it's approved on the phone because God forbid something, you know, something <laughs> happens. It goes, you know, every now and then you can get an application that right. says that it's approved <laughs> and all of a sudden it's not. Yeah. I don't want to run into any issues there. So I tell them it's going to take one to two weeks for them to decide. With this company in particular, let's say it's America, they've been coming back really, really fast with their decisions. So what you'll notice, like I said in the beginning, they're not going to take any money until you're actually approved. So if you wake up on Tuesday, Wednesday, and you see that that money was uh, withdrawn, that means you're approved. That's a good thing, okay? Then wow. at that point, you can take uh, give them 10 to 14 business days to actually receive your policy, policy in the mail. Unless they do the electronic, you know, then it's just going to mm-hmm. come via email. Delivered. So that's what I tell them. And then, then I just move right on. So um, give them 10 to 14 business days to actually receive your policy in the mail. Now I'm going to send you, when we get off the phone, a text message. That's going to have my name. It's going to have what I do, the company that we went with, the face amount, and the policy number. I'm going to send that to you, okay? This is coming from my cell phone, my personal cell phone. So if you need anything at all in the future, um, feel free to reach out to me. You can call me. You can text me. Like I said, it's my personal phone. So you can reach me on the weekend. If I don't answer right away, I'll get right back to you. Um, but that's it. So let me know as soon as I send this text that you actually got it, okay? Okay. All right, perfect. And then we hang up, and then I send the text. And then they usually just give me like a thumbs up or something. Run through what you say about the when you see the premium come out. That was so good. Yeah, so I say. So you, you you always you don't post date any business. No, post dating is the devil. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't post date. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So you you always submit it on, on approval. So yeah. it's like policy effective date is the day it's approved. Mm-hmm. And you say so it takes one to two weeks. Let me say this back to you. I want to see if I'm hearing this right. Yeah. So it takes one to two weeks for the for the company to approve you. Now, if on Tuesday or Wednesday, and say this is a Sunday or a Monday, yeah. on Tuesday or Wednesday you see the money come out of your account, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That means you were approved. You're approved. That's so good. Yeah. That's, and then and then I just try to keep moving forward past that. Do you get much pushback there? Are they like, yeah, sounds good. Dude, I can't wait to have this draft out of my account. I've legitimately never had pushback on that. That's crazy. W- whether this is in the field or whether, whether it's over the phone. I have, it's, I say the same thing both ends. That's so good. All right, now they get declined. How do we pivot? Now now they get declined. Um, before I tell them that they get declined, I'm pulling up. Let's say I'm doing America. They get, the, uh, the, uh, they get declined because they're on PayMedge or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm going through AMM and I'm putting their information in. And I... Um, I tell them, I usually don't say you got the client. I put their information with MM. I act like everything is just fine. And then when I submit it, I'm going to say, all right, so we put it with a couple of different carriers just start trying to get you the best rate to make sure that you're going to get approved. And so um, if one company doesn't approve you and the other one does, so you, and you get a letter in the mail saying you were declined, just ignore that. Don't worry about it. That's just something technical to happen on our end. But we're, that just means that we're going with another carrier that got you better rate or, or, or you know, they got you approved or whatever. So sure. Something along those lines. That's great. That is freaking good. All right. So that wraps up how you do telesales. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about, and that everything you said makes a ton of sense and why you're writing a lot of business. Let's talk about the do nots. What are some things that you do not want to say on a telesale in the beginning, middle, and end? Yeah, so um, never ask. You never want them to tell you what their. You never want to say, ask them what their budget is. How much are you trying to spend uh, each month? Twelve dollars, because that's because <laughs> that's what you get. And everyone is always going to under budget themselves, and everybody always wants to get a lot for a little. And the reality of it is, and sometimes like you will get that. And then I, I usually laugh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I wish I could get that too, <laughs> you know. And then then like. You just say something like, "This is you have to you have to remember this is real money these companies are giving out, so it's an actual hundred thousand dollars or it's an actual thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> like it's real money that yeah. can be used. No company on planet Earth is going <laughs> to give you a hundred thousand dollars for twelve dollars a month. It, does, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a twenty four year old. It's just not going to happen. Right. Right. Um, so, and like I said, everybody has that. Everybody wants a lot for a little, but it's just not going to. So avoid that. Don't ask <laughs> them what their budget is. Another thing that's super important. It's a, it's important in home. And I think it's even more important on the phone is, is don't sound timid. Don't sound unsure because people have this expectation or not an expectation, but a perception of things where if I'm not in person, 
I'm a little more weary of like scams and stuff. And if I'm talking to someone and you sound timid, like you're not confident what you're doing, that just my 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 warning light is going off in my head. And now when you get to the bank info, uh, the social, I'm probably not going to give that to you because you sound weird on the yeah. phone. And now you're freaking me out. So yeah. I try not to freak people out. And just I want it to sound like I do this every day. You're one of 27 people I'm going to talk to today. Give me your information. This is not weird. Business as usual. Yeah, like like you're being weird if you don't give it to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for like, sure. Like, you want the coverage or not? <laughs> you know? Um, so don't do that. So don't ask what their budget is. Don't ask for them to tell you what they want for coverage. Um, don't sound timid. And don't avoid telling them what's realistic. So if you do get someone that says, you know, they they're have major health issues or they're old or whatever, and they, they, do, they do say that I want this huge amount, um, don't be you know, timid in telling them you, you can't get that. You can't get that. I, I wish that I could get a $60 million policy that I would, you know, that you would, you would pay for it for me, but it's just not going to happen because this is real money. And I always go back to that. This is a real money people. And I tell them this people lose, lose, uh, 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 people, people become unaware or, uh, de- detached from the monetary value that they're actually applying for. And you have to understand that this is an actual amount of money that a company is actually paying out. And if they give everyone that's 74 years old uh, $330,000 worth of coverage, they would have been out of business like 12 years ago. So that's just something that they, that they can't do. The reality of it is, and I'll say this, the reality of it is, Rob, you're 76 years old and no company in America is going to give you that amount of coverage. It just doesn't exist, you know? So um, instead, what the company did, they came out with a product that is for people in your situation. And this is what most people in your situation do. Instead of looking at $330,000, which at 76 years old, if they were going to give you this, you're going to be paying about $6,000 a month for it. <laughs> and that doesn't sound fun it for anyone. It doesn't sound fun. <laughs> so instead, fun. right? So instead, uh, they came out with this product. It's 30000 or 25000 or tw- whatever it is. And this is still a real 30000 a real 25000 a real 20000 that will pay out. There's no term. This is permanent. I promise you that you or your family is going to get more out of this than if you were to just put one hundred and twenty dollars away a month and then die in four years, right? This yeah, is a 100%. real amount of money. Don't lose sight of that, and then try to move on that way. This process actually sounds very enjoyable. I have more fun with it. In your clients, like even on your clients, and you've we've all been on the other line of a bad salesperson that's like making us do things, or they're timid, or they're sketchy, or whatever. And like you have no choice but to do business with that person, so you can't hang up. But with in this, like they can hang up, and they're not hanging up. Mm-hmm. In fact, you've gotten referrals from a phone sale. Yeah, yeah. How'd that go for you this week? Really good. Yeah, it got me an additional twenty four thousand dollars in submission. What? Twenty four thousand. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that worked really well. Yeah, yeah, and that, that was yeah, that was just the referral. I helped somebody out on the phone. You it, never met that person. Not in person. Right. No, correct. Yeah. This $24,000 deal you did. Oh yeah. You never met that guy. Mm -mm. And what did he tell you at the end of that sale? He's got more. He's He's got, he's got people for you. Yeah. Yeah. He's got, he's got more people. So he, he was self-employed and he works within a community where in his, in his uh, line of work, a lot of people are self-employed. And so he doesn't have any retirement or anything. Doesn't really know what to do with his money. And he has a large community. And so he said, um, he, and he told me that he goes, look, he goes, yeah, he said, you've been great. Um, you seem like you're a really great guy. He said, and I really appreciate what you've done for me. This, uh, so, so then he goes, um, I have a lot of other friends that I work with that will probably need the exact same coverage that I just got. And then he, th- this is the best <laughs> part. He goes, do you mind if I give him your number? Like, do you mind? <laughs> I said, no, I, I, I go, I go, no, I don't mind at all. I said, look, man, um, I've had a great time working with you. And if I can help them out the same way I've helped you out, that would be a blessing for me. So if you give them my number, I would, I would actually appreciate that. Awesome. And then, so, you know, and this, this, I mean, this just happens. So hopefully he gives them my number. Yeah. I mean, look, that's, this speaks volumes for your approach and, and what you're doing. Is there anything else you want to leave us with or that pretty much sum it up? That pretty much sums it up. I would just say, again, go into it with realistic expectations. Don't go into this thinking that you're going to get, you know, eight calls and you're going to close seven. It's right. just, you're just, you're not going to. Um, no, can that is. happen? No, no, good. No, can't happen. Good. Thanks for saying that. Yep. You can't, that's not happening. Not going to happen <laughs> again. Don't be timid and don't be unrealistic. Can't happen. Um, so expect, you know, six phone calls. If you're decent, maybe you close two of them. And let's just say you spend, uh, $600 on those six phone calls. Cause you're paying a hundred dollars a week, mm-hmm. which it does not cost that much, but let's just say that you do. But you close two, and now that yields you twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, so your average deal size has been pretty similar to what your in home is. Yeah, yeah, my, my my average deal size is 
I haven't actually averaged it out, but it's got to be around fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. That's great. Yeah, that's that magic number too. That's where I like to be. Yeah. I, I don't like those huge, you know, <laughs> like three hundred and forty dollar a month policies because it's very easy to cancel. Yeah, even though your first house sale was like thirty four hundred, it's crazy. Yeah, You're like yeah, wait, maybe there is something to this. Yeah, but the numbers always even out. You've done a couple small ones, done mm-hmm. a couple big ones, and take out that monster one. Average deal size 110, 120 bucks a month. Yeah, which is freaking good love place it. to live. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for your time. Hope this helps everybody. Um, if they want to work with you, Chris, where can they reach you? Uh, so you, you can call me, 860-617-6600. Um, you can go to my site, www.fflthelos.com. Um, you're hiring, we, you're growing. Yeah, hiring, growing. Aren't New we senior all? vice <laughs> president. There we yeah, go. yeah. And Actually, uh, this is the first time it's announced. You just hit Hall of Fame as a producer, so congratulations yeah. in your first year. Thank you. Uh, it took you nine that. and a half months to do it, so mm-hmm. congratulations on that, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. I yeah, appreciate awesome. that, yeah. So look, if you want to work with Chris, holler at him, and mm-hmm. uh, we'll get you up and moving and get you making money. So thanks so much for your time. Perfect, yeah, thank you.